How's everyone doing? Walking in this room feels amazing. It feels amazing in here. We have all of our church family and our Jesus School students. I just want to welcome everyone here who is in the room. It's so good to be with you all tonight. I want to welcome all of our church family online as well. I'm so thankful that you're watching tonight. I would love if you all could just join me in prayer. Jesus, we're just so thankful for you. We're so thankful that you're in this room. Come, Jesus, come. That's our only prayer. I was reading in Luke about asking, seeking, and knocking persistently, and that is all we want, Jesus. We are asking, seeking, and knocking for you to come close. Come close in this room tonight, Jesus. Be so close in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. The word persistently means that against all odds and difficulties and against whatever it is that's coming your way, that we are going forward persistently. We are going forward through the difficulties. We are going through the hesitations. Some of you are coming tonight looking for a miracle. <laughs> and the miracle worker is in the room. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.
love you again. Sing, we love you.
Lifting your song. Don't wait for us. Just run to the feet of Jesus. Start lifting your song. Come on, just start singing in the spirit. Start singing in the spirit.
and the Lord is here. Jesus, we thank you that you are with us tonight. The one who was and is and is to come. Jesus, you are beautiful. Our heart posture these past few months has been, come, Lord. Come, Jesus, we need you. Come in all your beauty and all your splendor. Come in your majesty and in your power. You're here and you're coming. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here and you're coming. We need more of you, Lord. Fill this place with you. Fill our hearts and our mouths and our minds with you, Jesus. Fairest of ten thousands. The Ancient of Days is with us in this building. We love you, Lord. We look nowhere else. You are our pursuit and you are our goal. You're the one who lays our head down at night and wakes us up in the morning. We can't live without you, Jesus. You are the very breath in which we breathe, Father. You are the answer, Lord. It is all found in you. It is all found in you, Jesus, and we thank you. We thank you for finding a home here tonight with us. Thank you for resting with us here tonight. We say yes to you, Jesus. We thank you for tonight and what you have in store. We thank you in advance. Every miracle, every salvation, every transformation of a life, paradigm shifts, and people's hearts forever branded with your love and with your goodness. We say yes, Jesus. In your beautiful name we pray. Amen. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Come on, let's just give Jesus a shout tonight. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you tonight. Worship team tonight. You guys are amazing. Thank you, Lord. You guys can all find your seats. We have an amazing, amazing night in store for you guys tonight. I'm just gonna. You guys excited to give tonight? Come on, you guys excited to worship the Lord with our tithes and with our offerings? You guys want to turn real briefly with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and I'm going to start in verse 7. You know, last week I, I just mentioned about giving directly to the Lord, that in this time of worship we, we are placing our, our tithe and our offering in, into the hands of Jesus. And I felt today that the Lord was, put this scripture on my heart, so if you guys want to read with me, it says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And as I was reading that, I could just feel it, man, that the Lord, the Lord is moved when we give cheerfully to him. That when the posture of our heart is full of joy and full of cheer, that we get to actually give into the hands of Jesus. I remember when my son was little, he was probably about six years old, and he gave me a Christmas present. And it was the very first gift that he's ever given me from his own money. 
from money that we have given to him. Come on, how many know the Lord has given us everything that we have? We give back to him what he's already given to us. But uh, my son was getting allowance and we would give him money and I remember a Christmas present uh, or a, a Christmas time, he gave me a Christmas present and it was uh, some Oakland Raiders golf tees. It was very specific to what I liked. And uh, when he gave it to me, he gave to me with such a cheerful heart. When he, I remember seeing his face and he was so happy because he knew that I liked what he was giving me. And I remember it moved my heart when I saw the joy and the cheer on his face. And when I read this scripture today, I could just remember my son's face, how it moved my heart. And the Lord says he loves a cheerful giver, that it moves the Father's heart when we give with a cheerful, glad heart. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, a joyful heart gives way to a cheerful countenance, a cheerful face. And as last week I was talking about the woman with two mites, as she was giving her offering into to the money chambers where, where Jesus was sitting that, you know, in scripture it doesn't say what her demeanor was or what she looked like. But I believe that she was full of joy because the Lord loves a cheerful giver and the Lord puts her in remembrance in scripture. You know, some translation says that the Lord was watching how, how they gave, not how much they gave. And I believe growing up, I would picture this old, this woman, you know, it says a widow and she was giving her, her two mites and I, I could see her, you know, giving sadly to the Lord. But I, I don't think that was what she was doing. I believe she was giving cheerfully to the Lord because she knew into the hands she was giving to. The one who gave her those two mites to begin with, just like my son. And so the Lord was just showing me that we don't give reluctantly or out of pressure is because love takes that out of the equation. There's no, there's no compulsion, there's no reluctancy, there's no hesitation when we're in love. And as we give into the hands of Jesus, that we can give with a cheerful heart, that we can give knowing that we are giving into eternal hands, trusted hands, our Lord Jesus Christ. So I just wanna encourage you guys to that today, that man, we can trust Jesus, he's beautiful. He's given us everything that we have. And so as we give tonight, I believe the Lord is standing by the buckets, just like he was in that scripture. And he's seeing his, his children given to his hands. And it's such a beautiful time of worship that we get to do this. So I just, I'm gonna pray over the, uh, the money. Our screens currently look like they're not, oh, we got it right here. Glory to God. We text GIVE to 321-320. 8040. So we're going to leave that up on the screen. You guys can text to give. And if you guys are still giving by mailing a check, uh, we also will have that information up there. Um, and if they don't put it up, I will read it to you guys because I have it somewhere in my phone just so we can get that um, going. You guys can send it to Jesus Image. P.O. Box 950640, Lake Mary, Florida, 32795. So if you guys are still mailing check, you guys can send that to Jesus Image at P.O. Box 950640, Lake Mary, Florida, 32795. Come on, let's just pray over the offering tonight. Father, we thank you, Jesus, that we get to give back to you what you have given to us. That in this time of worship to you, Lord, we can bring our tithes to you and we can give of our offering to you. It's an honor, Lord. It's a privilege, Jesus, to give into your hands tonight. We are so thankful that you have freely given of yourself to us so we can freely give back to you. Thank you, Father. You are so good. You are faithful. We say amen in Jesus' name. Man, you guys could come up and rush the buckets if you like. I know we can both go on the sides over here since we don't have a center aisle. So you guys could come up and, uh, and give tonight.
play a video right now on the screen. So we would love for you guys just to, uh, I think we're going to play it right here on the center screen. So uh, you guys enjoy it. Hey, what's up, everyone? I miss you guys so much. Jessica misses you. Just wanted you to hear from us and see us. And, and man, I can't wait to get back in there next week. You know, these next two weeks as a church family are going to be catalytic. So it's vital that you are here next Sunday night and the following Sunday night. It is going to be very important. Really, over the next three Sundays, uh, man, let's just pray every Sunday is amazing. But really, these next few Sundays are important. So make sure you're there. And this Sunday, right now, tonight, is no different. Um, Nathan Morris is a dear friend of mine and I love him. I love Rachel. Uh, and since the day I met Nathan, he has been an encouragement to me, uh, an ear of faith, um, a voice of faith and uh, just a dear friend and a, a faithful friend and a strength to me during challenging times and Nathan, I love you and I honor you for that. But beyond my friendship with Nathan, I deeply honor Nathan. And, and I know our house does. I know we all honor Nathan. But I just want us to posture our hearts to receive this precious gift from heaven that uh, the Lord has given us in Nathan to bring the gospel and the love of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to the nations. He's been an example of a committed heart to the gospel, uh, humility, a holy life, and is a fine example to a generation. And so I want us to receive now and posture our hearts to, to get everything the Lord has for us tonight. So I want us to stand in the most embarrassing way. I want you to welcome Nathan Morris to Jesus image tonight. Embarrass him real good, will you? Welcome, Welcome Nathan. Nathan. We love, love you so much. much. Come on and give Jesus a mighty shout. Come on. Put your eyes on him. Put your eyes on the Lamb of God. Jesus image, I don't hear you. Give God a radical praise. Worthy, 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 worthy. Lamb of God, you are worthy of all the glory. All the glory is yours. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and forever. Come on, church, give God a mighty shout. Lift your hands all over this place. Father, we have come in and through the mighty name, the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. For Lord, your word declares that we are to come boldly before the throne of grace. So Father, right now, I break off shame. I break off guilt. I break off the mindset that the enemy seeks to lock down your people. And I declare that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So Lord, we come boldly before the throne. Let your glory fill this house. I declare over every heart and over every life that we have come to the table of the Lord. We have come to taste of the living bread, the bread of life, to drink of the living water. Let your word be like a hammer that breaks up the stony places. Let your word be like the laver that purifies the heart. Lord, let your word bring life and restoration and healing and deliverance. It's your word that brings life. Spirit of God, come and do whatever you seek to do. <laughs> You're already here. I give you this service. Anoint my mouth that I may speak your word. Let it pierce 
darkness. Let it pierce every heart. In Jesus' mighty name. I take authority over every sickness, over every disease, over every stronghold. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak the blood of Jesus over your life right now. Every devil, every tormenting spirit has to flee in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, give God one more shout. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Can I tell you one of my, one of my most favorite things is to come to Jesus' image, to be with you guys. You are radical. Has anybody ever told you that you guys are just radical? I feel like I'm at home. Before I bring the word of God, I just want to say how much we love Michael and Jessica Kulianas. You know, I met Michael's brother first. He came to the Bay Revival, what was 10 years ago now. And eventually I met Michael and as soon as I met him, I knew he was a man after God's own heart. That he was pursuing after the presence of God. Little did I realize that we'd be living in the same region. But I believe God is doing something special in your midst. Protect it with everything you have. And I know with Michael and Jessica, they're a, an incredible covering over your lives. Honor them, pray for them. I believe God's about to take this thing to a whole new level. And we need to pray that God would give them just revelation and wisdom. Can you say amen? Can we thank God for the lives of Michael and Jessica Kulianas? Can we thank God for their lives? The Bible says give honor where honor. Thank you for Michael and Jessica. Lord, we pray for them even now. Lord, let your glory rest upon them even tonight. Bless them. Encourage them. Lord, strengthen them as they take on the new chapters, the new horizons that you have in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What a world we're living in right now, huh? I remember when the coronavirus was breaking out. I remember one night, sat with my wife and we were just eating dinner and I heard the president make some of the early announcements. Many of you know that I'm from England, but I'm now an American. So this is my home. You can't get rid of me now. I got a passport. I ain't leaving. But the travel bans began to take place. And then I began to realize the severity of what was happening around the world. Almost immediately, our gospel campaigns around the world were being canceled. Stadiums that had already been paid for. The staging and the lighting was all ready. Literally thousands would have filled those stadiums. As I entered into 2020, the word over my life, I knew that this was going to be the greatest year of harvest. And yet in that moment, it was like confusion came into my spirit. But I don't serve a God of confusion. So I knew that in the midst of it, God was trying to teach me something. And that night I went to before the Lord and I was just, my wife was sleeping and I was upstairs, the lights were out, I like to just sit in silence. And I was just praying and I said, God, what is happening? What about the harvest, Lord? I've had few visions in my life. I'm not one of those vision guys, you know. I meet people and all they do is have visions. They scare me a little bit. Like God told me to wear these jeans this morning. I'm like, whoa. I 
I've had few visions in my life. Anytime God has ever given me a vision, it has been a landmark moment. It has changed destiny. But that night, as sure as I'm stood here, I saw an open vision. It was a few seconds long, but it felt like I was in the vision for hours. And I saw an army of people, and they were dressed in white. They weren't robes, but it was like athletic gear, like they were sprinters. And I saw thousands of them begin to get into the blocks, and they began to put their feet in the blocks. And on the front of their, of their jerseys, it said, Chosen. And as clear as I was watching a television set, I saw these people get in the blocks and something happened in the vision that was so powerful that it literally made me physically tremble. But I heard a gunfire. And when I mean a gunfire, it was the loudest thing I'd ever heard. It vibrated my entire being. Boom! And I saw men and women of all ages and they came out of the blocks like I'd never seen before. And they began to sprint as fast as they could. But there was something supernatural taking place. And I heard in that moment, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And He said, tell my people that in the hour of great darkness, there will be an acceleration to the harvest of the likes that they have never seen before. And I saw in my spirit that what is coming right now will be the most incredible harvest you can possibly imagine. But in your life, there's coming an acceleration. God is about to do things what would have taken years before. He's going to do them in a moment. The suddenness of God will begin to happen. Suddenly you'll be nowhere. In the next minute, God will put you right in the place of your destiny. See, in that moment, my whole, my whole mentality, my, my whole spirit changed because I realized this was not me being stopped. This was God saying, rest. Rest. Get everything in place. Get ready for the gunfire. Because what the devil thought when he locked down the nations... That next morning I woke and I opened the scriptures. And the apostle Paul is writing to Timothy. This is not the sermon by the way. I'm just talking to you. Paul is writing to Timothy. He's in chains. He's locked down. He's in a jail cell. He was called to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. But now he's in prison. And he says to Timothy, these chains, these chains are in Christ. He said, I got to let you know, you think this is locked down. But he says a statement and it is the most powerful, powerful revelation. He said, I am in chains, but the word of God cannot be chained. He says, you may see chains, but the word of God is still going forth. The word of God is still established. The word of God cannot be locked down. So you might feel like you're in a season where everything's locked down. But can I tell you, the word over your life, the word that God has spoken over you, even before you were in your mother's womb, that word cannot be chained. There's no devil in hell that can stop it. And I want you to praise God right now that his word shall come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring you the word that God gave me tonight. I feel like preaching. Can you say amen? amen? Can I preach it the way I normally preach it? Yes. 
Young people, listen to me just for one moment. If you don't listen to anything else I'm about to preach, listen to this. I love to worship God. I love to dance and to shout. I love it. But you see, sometimes things happen in life that you won't feel like shouting and you won't feel like jumping and you won't feel like singing. And it's in those moments that you got to have the word in you. His word is a sure foundation. The Bible says, listen to this, that he put his word above his name. Now more than ever, read the word. Get that word in you. Even when you don't fully understand it, I've learned that I just got to get the word in. The Holy Spirit does the rest. There are times I get the word in, I'm like, what did I just read? But there's a moment I might be preaching, I might be in a time of trial, and suddenly the Holy Spirit begins to bring that word out of me, and I start to speak the word. So tonight I want to preach the word of God. And then the power of God is going to fall in this place. Those of you that are watching online, there are no walls to the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, the same anointing is in that home. It's in that room right now. All you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. I want you to turn in your Bibles, please, to a scripture that God has been speaking in my life over the last number of days. It's fresh. And I pray tonight that God will feed you with this word as much as he has fed me. Psalms chapter 27 a famous psalm. You know, I'm an evangelist. I love to preach the gospel. I love to preach the ABCs. But I'm also a pastor's son. I grew up in church. And I love to preach to God's people. I pray that you're hungry for the word tonight. Amen. Psalms 27 says this. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army, verse 3, though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing of high desire of the Lord, that will I Seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Give God praise for his word. I want to pick up on verse 1. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Jesus spoke of a time in Matthew 24 when he said that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Jesus prophesied to a generation that nation would rise against nation. 
Literally translated, that means race will rise against race. That's what we're seeing in America. That antichrist spirit trying to stir up. That's why the church needs us to rise up like never before and show that we are one. We are in unity. We are of one accord pursuing after the Lamb of God. Jesus said, be watchful. Be alert. In other words, do not allow the things of this world to dampen your awareness of his coming. Jesus is awakening a generation that there's a darkness about to come upon the nations of the world. Jesus speaks of a woman in labor. The contractions are a sign. The Bible says it's the sign of the times. I'm not a prophet of doom, but one thing I can tell you this, and I got to be careful right now because you ladies are going to like go, what's he talking about? He knows nothing of what he's speaking. But one thing I know about contractions is this, the nearer the birth, the more frequent the contractions begin to take place. And you see, church, we've not been called to blindness and be paralyzed by fear. No, we've been called to understand the hour in which we live, to take our rightful place. Do not fear. Jesus says, do not be troubled. But more is coming. I said more contractions are coming. If you're not prepared, see, Jesus said, do not be troubled. He said, when you see these signs, look up. He said, look up, for your redemption draws near. He said, change your posture. If all that you're doing in this hour is looking at Fox News or whatever you look at for your news, then you're in the wrong posture. Jesus said, when you see it, begin to fix your gaze, fix your eyes upon the lamb that was slain. Paul wrote, do this, understanding the present time, understanding the hour in which you live. The hour has come for you to wake from your slumber. I wasn't even going to preach this bit, but I might as well. Be careful. Be careful. All these people with all different prophecies of this is the end times. Be careful. See, when they ask Jesus, what will be the moment of your return? Jesus gives them a few headlines, but then he says, take heed. He said, stop looking at all that you want to hear. Take heed. In other words, make sure your heart is right. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you are fixed on me. See, there will be famine and pestilence. But you let guess what, church? My God is not on lockdown. I'm gonna say it again, my God is not on lockdown. My God is not self-isolating. The Holy Spirit has not got a muzzle around his face. He's speaking louder than ever. My God is not isolated. He's at the peak of his power. He's never wavered, he's never faulted. He is for the everlasting from everlasting. See, David writes something that as a generation we got to grasp. And if you can get this tonight by the Spirit of God, I promise you, your situations begin to change overnight. See, David writes, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. See, God said in the book of Acts chapter 15 that God would restore the tabernacle of David. In other words, that through the blood of Jesus Christ, something was about to be restored. 
You see, the tabernacle of David, it, he didn't say the tabernacle of Moses. He didn't say the tabernacle of Solomon. He said the tabernacle of David. You see, in every other tabernacle, there was a veil. But in the tabernacle of David, that's why Jesus said, the hour has come and is now that my people shall worship me in spirit and in truth. You see, the tabernacle of David, everyone could see the Shekinah glory. Everyone could see the glory of God. And that's why there's a generation rising right now that are worshiping him in spirit and in truth they are declaring the Lord is my, my light the Lord is my light see my friend you can't worship God without the Holy Ghost I said you can't worship God without the Holy Spirit Paul said in Philippians 3.3, 3, Worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how many lights you've got. Without the Holy Ghost, you don't know what it is to step into that glory, to step into His light and worship in spirit and in truth. The Lord is my light. See, my friend... There is no greater opposite in the word of God than light and darkness. Because the definition of darkness is the absence of light. The very definition of darkness is when there is no light. Darkness can only reign where there is no light. When David said, you are my light, he was proclaiming, you are my vision, you are my source, you're my glory, you're the lifter of my head, you're the establisher of my peace, you're my strength, you're my fortress, you're my defense, you're my enlightenment, you're my passion, you're my covering, you're my savior. I wish there was somebody tonight that could declare with me, the Lord is my light. The absence of of light. You see, wherever there's darkness in your life, that means the light of God's glory is not allowed to enter. See, wherever the, the areas of darkness are, see, that's why the Bible says about the world. In Psalms 82, it says that they do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. See, that's what it means. When you don't have the presence of God in your life, when you are stumbling through life like a blind man in the darkness of this world. I don't listen to what the politicians are telling me. I may observe it, but I don't let it get in my spirit. Because I'm not walking around in this world in their darkness stumbling around. The Lord is my light. I said the Lord is my light. And the Bible says that he orders my steps. Oh, I don't, I, who am I preaching to right now? You got to break fear from your life. Because fear is a spirit. I see Christians online. It's the end of the world. So what? The Lord is my light. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, when the glory begins to shine in your life, everything changes. I'm not talking about dead religion. I'm talking about when you begin to walk by the Spirit. When you say, Holy Spirit, be my light, be my guide. The Lord is my light. Oh, how a generation need to rise up and begin to declare the Lord is my light. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. Shall not walk in depression. Shall not walk with a suicidal spirit. Shall not walk in drug addiction. He said, he who follows me shall walk in the light. Am I supposed to social distance? I'm not sure. I got to stay up here. We got to preach the fullness of this gospel. 
See, my friend, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or I'm just telling you that there is a hope. There is a freedom that Christ can break the chains. He can set you free tonight. He can break that off your life. The Lord is my, my light. Jesus said, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. You see, in darkness, my friend, there's no vision. There's no vision. That's why Jesus said the eye of the body is the lamp. If the eye is full of light, then your whole body will be full of light. I hope you can take this tonight. If your eye is full of pornography, then get ready. Perversion has just entered your life. Your eye is the gateway to your soul. What you watch, what you listen to. Jesus said, watch your eyes. Make sure that your eyes are set on the light. Because if you fix your eyes on him... The enemy has no hold over you. I said the enemy has no hold over you. When you begin to declare the Lord is my light, what you're saying is my eyes are fixed on the Lamb of God. And when the enemy knows your eyes are fixed, he has to flee from you. I said the devil has to flee from you. Is this too strong tonight? See, my Bible tells me in Romans 13, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. In another scripture, Jesus said, be dressed, be ready, and have your lamps burning. My friend, are your lamps burning? Is your heart ablaze? Are you ready? Can you declare with everything within you tonight, the Lord is my light? See, if you want to see the glory of God in your life, there's no plan B. Oh, you better. I could keep you here all night about my plan B's. And how God had to strip me down until I couldn't even think of a plan B. And I just said, God, please help me. You are my light. Show me the way. I need a miracle. But when God got me to that place, his light, his glory started to shine in me. And I started to see the supernatural power of God. See, the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? You see, Jesus said that lawlessness would abound. If you study that, it means the opportunity for iniquity. I don't have time to teach this because this is not the sermon. But there's a difference between sin and iniquity. And iniquity is a transgression. It's generational. See, that's why a father or a mother, a parent, they can sow iniquity. And they were an alcoholic. And they wonder why the children are alcoholics. And they, that is iniquity. That's why God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, he broke iniquity. That's why when you say, wash me in your blood, it's not just your sin. It's the sin of generations. It's broken from your life. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. God is saying, separate yourselves. See, God is searching right now. I feel this in my spirit. Even in this building, God is looking for those that are fully sold out. They're ready. Because what you see happening in the nations, always remember this. God always has men and women. He always has a man or a woman that yield to him. That he can raise up in an hour where it seems like there's no hope. And can I tell you in America, around the world, a generation is arising. Crying the Lord is light. 
See, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning, and all things that were made were made through Him. It says in verse 4, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Can I go a bit deeper tonight? See, in the beginning was the word. See, I started to this, because this word on he is my light, it just started to penetrate me. In every area of my life, I want to be able to declare the Lord is my light. God took me to Genesis, and it says in the beginning... Genesis 1.1, 1, 1. it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And creation's response was, there was light because his word will not return to him void without first accomplishing that which he pleases. But then he goes on to say, then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And then you read on, and it says, and he saw that it was good. And God saw the light, and saw that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness, he called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. The evening and the morning were the, verse 16 says, then God made two great lights. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give the light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Oh, this, this side didn't get it. Okay. <laughs> Neither did you. Okay. I just read to you in verse 1 that God said, let there be light and there was light. And he divided the day from the night. He called it day and night. And that was the first day. But God didn't make the sun or the moon until the... You'll get it. You'll get it. That means for three days, for three days, His glory illuminated all of creation. His glory shone. There was no need for sun. There was no need for moon. God was saying, I am the light of the world. I am your source. I am your life. I am your creator. I am the light of the world. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. That light shining right now. That glory shining right now. If that's not enough for you, for you Bible theologians, for you Jesus school students, you want to go a little bit deeper? If you don't believe me, go to Revelation 21, 23. The Bible says that Jesus should return as King of kings and Lord of lords. And it says we will ride with him. He'll ride a white horse. I don't know whether I'll be riding anything. I've never read anything in my life. But I'm going to hang on for dear life. I'm going to be like, Jesus, I'm coming. But Revelation 21, 23 says this. Whew, this is good. He says the city, the new Jerusalem, the one that we will reign with him. It says the new Jerusalem has no need of the sun or the moon. For the glory of God will illuminate it. The Lamb is its light. Oh, you ought to give God a mighty shout of praise. The Lamb of God, He's still the light of the world. He's still your light. He shines 
in your darkness right now. There's a light shining in your life right now. There's a light shining in this auditorium right now. The same glory that lit up creation. God said, well, I might as well make an earthly light, but the real light, your real source, you got to see through the eyes of faith. And through the eyes of faith, I will take you from darkness into light. Now you will say the Lord is truly my light and my salvation. See, that's why when God said, let there be light, something manifested out of darkness. Psalms 119, 130 says, the entrance of your words give light. The entrance of your word gives light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. The entrance of his word. You've got to let the word enter your life. You must let the word take root in you. Because that word, when it enters, the Bible says it giveth light. See, I meet thousands of people all over the world, and they come, they want to prophesy over me, lay hands on me, and they don't know a scripture in the entire word. Young people, when you have the word, you'll recognize when the enemy is trying to deceive you. When the world is trying to cause you to step into darkness, because his word giveth light. See, that's why we need the Holy Ghost. We need the presence of God. This is why I love this ministry. Because when you get into the glory, when you get into the presence of God, God will give you revelation. We need revelation in this hour. We don't need a three-point sermon. We don't need the next big song. And we, No, no, we need the revelation of his glory. We need a revelation that the Lord is my height. The entrance of your word. That's why Ephesians says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That's called enlightenment. It's the revelation of his glory. Have you ever noticed that you can read a word a hundred times, but suddenly one day, it's like the light shines on it. The light shines and suddenly you see it in a whole different way. That's the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I'm calling to you in this hour when the world is in darkness. We need to step into his glory, into his light, and let the revelation of his glory be made manifest in us. Paul called it the hidden wisdom. He said, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. See, young people, when I got saved... I, I didn't go to Bible college. I didn't have time. It just wasn't what God had for me. Some of you are going to this school. I tell you, if I would have been at Jesus school, you better get ready. I'd have been a Holy Ghost ninja. But you see, I didn't have a, a Bible teacher. I just had to get in the presence of God. I had to let the glory of God begin to permeate me. That light began to shine on his word. And suddenly that revelation began to flow. And I realized that God is my healer more than the air that I could breathe. I know that God is a fire because his fire fell on me. It was more real to me than the air that I was breathing. And our eyes of understanding would be enlightened. That you don't go to Facebook for your revelation. See, those kind of people, they're not moved in this hour. You get around men and women that know what it is to go before God, to get on their face and begin to cry out to God. When you get around those people, they ain't moved. Paul said, none of these things move me. The light of his glory is shining and everything else fades into insignificance.
see, I'm not preaching to anyone this morning. This morning, this night. I'm not preaching to anyone that knows what it is. That it feels like there's darkness all around. There's nothing in your hand. But God gives you a word. You lose your job. There's nothing in your bank account. But somehow you're still fed. you still got money. I'm not preaching to anybody that knows what it is. That all around you feels like darkness. And yet God gives a word. And when that word comes, light begins to shine. And out of nothing you see, God can shed, shed his light on the jawbone of a mule and defeat an army. He can shine his light on five loaves and two fishes. He can shine a light on a man named David and take him from a shepherd boy and make him the king of all of Israel. The Lord is my, my light. When you get in the glory, you won't need as much of those counseling meetings than you think you do. When you get in the glory, you won't go to a man for inner healing. When that glory starts to fall on you, you will be changed from glory to glory. And you say, well, I need inner healing. Did I not just read to you that where darkness abides, when light begins to shine, darkness cannot even exist because its very definition is when light is... See, that's why Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He was telling the devil, devil, it's over. It is finished. Your very existence has ended when I stepped. The Lord is my light. See, God spent years in every generation trying to teach them how to step into the light. Am I preaching too long? You sure? Michael, am I preaching too long? Okay. He said another three hours at least, so. I feel the glory right now. See, God begins to define the generation of Moses. And he begins to teach them about the tabernacle and how to step into the presence of God. He teaches them about three stages of light. You see, in the outer court, it was the natural light. It was the earthly light. But you see, the inner court was a place of sonship and covenant. When you entered into the inner court, you stepped into covenant with God. And now the outer light, the natural light, the light that shines even in the world, the natural wisdom, the natural perspective. Now you step into a different light. And in that light, it was the candlesticks and the showbread. The showbread represents the word. The candlestick represents the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible speaks about in Revelation the seven spirits of God, which I'm not going to go into. There's no way we'll be here all night. But you see, in that realm of light, it demanded that you not only came into covenant, but you kept the fire burning. You had to prepare the bread, you had to trim the wick. And God said, never let the fire go out. That's why the Spirit of God came to the church in Revelation. And he said, if you will not repent, I will remove the candlestick from your midst. I will remove my presence from your midst. Your illumination. Your revelation. That's why in a ministry... When a ministry falls into sin, you may see that ministry and they look like they're doing the same thing, but there's no glory on it. 
It may look like the sign, but you'll find there's no holiness on it. The presence is gone. The candlestick has been removed. It demanded something of you. And you see, there's a realm of God's presence that unless you eat of the bread, unless you cause the fire to burn, your light will go out. That's why there are people in a church service. One of them goes out the same way they came in. But one, they'll get a word and that word will illuminate their whole life. They come up, they become radical. They get filled with the fire of God. I've been in meetings. I remember being in upstate New York. There were 5,000 people in that service. And I was talking just like I'm talking to you now. And suddenly, the candlestick was burning. The word was being preached. But suddenly, the power of God broke in there. For two hours, people were screaming. The whole stage just went out under the power. I felt literal wind blowing on the stage. It began to blow me back to the back wall. Pastor John Kilpatrick, who led the Brownsville Revival, he, me and him are now pinned to the back wall. And I saw that there was another level of God's presence. You see, the tabernacle of, of Moses was the outer court, the inner court. But there was a place called the Shekinah glory. There was a place that it was nothing about you. No flesh could stand in this light. It was all about him. And you see, my friend... I don't want to live in the outer court when Jesus tore the veil and he said, now step into my glory. I don't want to live in the light of this world when there's a realm of God's glory. I remember one night I was in Africa. People as far as my eye could see. And I'm preaching and I'm calling out, and suddenly the whole power fell out in the stadium. No power, no lights, no sound. I put the mic down, and I'm going, Jesus! The distance between me and the front row, I think one person could just about hear me. And I'm trying to tell you that there's another level of light for you. There's another realm that God's trying to take you in. You see, when you started walking with Jesus, you came from the natural light. And then you were walking and you were pursuing the Holy Spirit and you were reading the Word. And if you stay there long enough, if you can dwell in that illumination of God's Word, He's about to take you into the Holy of Holies, into a realm of God's glory. Where he, you see, David suffered rejection. David was ostracized. David knew what it was to be alone in a place and be forgotten. And yet, when God's glory began began to reign in his life. He not only defeated the enemy, but he stood and took his rightful place. And I'm trying to preach to somebody right now. If you will declare it, the Lord is my light. I got to finish. I got to finish. But you see, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Notice that singular. When you start pursuing the glory, get ready. People don't like you. Some of you don't like me. I remember I was in a meeting one time. And somebody came up to me and said, just, I just need to tell you something. I said, yes, what is it? And she said, well, we just wanted to come and her partner was with her. And she said, you know, when we saw you, we just didn't like you. In fact, we just spent the whole service just kind of disgusted. I said, why? Well, you're just sweating and you're shouting and... <laughs> he 
If I would have told them the te my testimony, they don't know where I'd be. He who has been forgiven much loves much. See, I was a young man bound with drugs, bound with addiction. I was a pastor's kid running from God. There were nights that I'd come out of clubs at 6 in the morning so full of ecstasy and cocaine that I would pass out. One night I had an allergic reaction, nearly died in the street. I cried out to Jesus. I couldn't even open my mouth. I was dying right there all by myself. And I called out to the Lord. And yet I still ran from him. I still ran from him. And yet when I encountered him, that fire fell on me. I wasn't even in a church. I wasn't even singing songs. I was in the room all by myself. And the fire of God came in that room. He put me on the floor for three hours. I felt a fire in here. And I know what Jeremiah said when he said, Your word is like a fire. Shut up in my bones. I shook for three hours. Fire all over me. I was pouring like I was in an oven. I was like, it's like I just got out of a swimming pool. You can't tell me that the fire of God's not real. But God had just shined a light on me. And God said, if you do what I tell you to do. But today I bring you out from under your father's covering. It was like choose this day. And I yielded to the Holy Ghost. And I told that couple. They said, but evangelist in the middle of the meeting. I was just being disgusted with you. And suddenly the power of God hit me in my seat. I felt a jolt go through me. She said, I slid out of my chair. And I've been under the glory the whole service. I said, my friend, listen to me. I'm not offended. Because it wasn't you. You didn't dislike me. You just disliked the anointing. But that anointing got on you. And now you love whom I love. He's the light of the world. I said, tonight the Lord is my life. Is there anybody in here that can give God a radical praise? I got to finish. He said, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Singular. You see, the more he gets closer to God's glory, now it's enemies and foes. <laughs> I get worried when we, we got a generation that, yeah, we wear skinny jeans and we're all contemporary. I was on a major television network recently. Major, major network. And before I went on, they said, look, evangelist, we brought you on. You know, we're really believing for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But we just need to tell you that we are contemporary spirit. I said, what? <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> what is contemporary spirit? They said, well, it's just the language. You know, we don't say anointing. We don't say this. We don't say that. I said, listen, guys. <laughs> listen. <laughs> just give me a minute. <laughs> I'm just going to go out there and do what I do. Is that okay? They said, well, just keep in mind that there's a generation that don't understand. I said, listen, they will understand. They will understand. It's not my words. It's the light. It's the light of his glory. It's the light of his glory that sets you ablaze. It's the light of his presence that changes you. You see, he goes from whom shall I be afraid to enemies and foes. In other words, the resistance gets greater. He says, though an army may encamp around me, now he goes from enemies and foes. You see, an enemy can be secret, but a foe you will always know. Oh, you didn't get that. I said an enemy can be secret. See, sometimes there's an enemy coming against your life. You can't see it, but you know something's happening. But a foe, you cannot have a foe without knowing who it is. That's why sometimes it's the closest people to you that will begin to resist when you start pressing in for more. Sometimes when you're in a landmark moment, when you're about to step into a new realm of glory, it's people that were once with you that will now turn against you. But David, he says, though an army encamp against me, though war may rise against me of this, will I be confident. 
See, my friend, in this hour, when the world is trembling, when they're telling as well there might be a vaccine, there may not be a vaccine, the world will never be the same again. Can I tell you of this? Will I be confident? Hebrews 10, 35 says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which is a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. See, when you're in the presence of God, there's a confidence that comes. There's a confidence that enters your spirit. When you get around great men and women of God, there's a confidence in them. There's something that it's like steel. And all, it feels like all hell's let loose, but they remain confident. He said, of this, I shall be confident. One thing have I desired, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. That all hell may be let loose, I will seek his face. Though the world may say there's no hope, I will seek his face. See, the Lord told me to tell you something. And I do this in the fear of the Lord. Glory doesn't come without trouble. Can he trust you with trouble? David says, whether it's enemies or foes, whether it's an army, whether there's a war raging against me, I will not fear. I will pursue. I will not be paralyzed. I will pursue. I will seek his face. You see, there's a level of God's glory that he wants to give you. But I promise you, it comes with trouble. You think the devil will not try to resist you, to buffet you, to discourage you? See, if I said tonight, line up, we're going to lay for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to lay my hand on you and the fire of God's going to go through you. Everyone's like, yeah. But what if I said that anointing comes with trouble? What if I told you that there are times in God's presence even now when you're worshiping and the glory's here. You've got to take that glory. You've got to absorb his presence because there's coming a time where you will have to decide this I will see. David didn't say if trouble. He said in the time of trouble. Keyboard player, just begin to play. In the time of trouble. You know, when I got saved, we used to be in prayer meetings. They used to be all night. We had people started joining the meetings. I mean, there'd be devils manifesting. I mean, it was crazy. The glory of God. Just incredible. Power of God's about to fall in this place. I feel it right now. But you see, some of those people today are not even in the kingdom. They were going to be nation shakers. But now... Now they're not even in the kingdom. Because in the time of trouble, they stayed in the outer court. But David said, one thing of I desired, that will I seek. How sad it would be that if I could stand here and tell you, I've seen the blind see and the deaf hear. I've watched the lame walk. I've seen miracles that blow your mind, legs growing, growing out. I, I've seen crazy things. 
have watched multitudes run to Christ. But what would be that testimony that in the time of trouble, my testimony was that I fell. I walked out of the Shekinah glory into that carnal realm. See, tonight, the Spirit of God is calling you. I'm preaching to people right now that there's darkness in your life. There's an issue in your life. And it's eating you up from the inside out. There's a bondage in your life. There's an addiction in your life. And it's eating you up inside. But you see, tonight, the entrance of his word giveth light. If you let him in, if you let the Lamb of God come and shine his light in that area of your life, I promise you, darkness has to flee. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. My friend, even right now, like in creation, and like the day when we reign with Him, His light is shining right now. If you open up your heart, that glory will begin to fall upon you. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, that glory will begin to fall in your life. All you have to do is step out of the outer court. Say, Lord, I give you my life. That's why he shed his blood. That's why he cried, it is finished. Because now, his light was shining in your life. I feel God's glory so strong right now. of trouble he will hide me his glory shall be my canopy see when God hides you no devil can ever find you that's why the Bible says that your life is hidden in Christ When the devil comes searching for you, all he'll find is the light. Young lady, come here. Just stand up. Just stand up. Close your eyes and lift your hands. Lord, I release your anointing right now. Never! The same again. Never the same again. There it is, there it is, there it is. When I was preaching, the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm breaking a spirit of suicide. I don't know whether I've ever said that in a meeting, but I'm telling you, I'm not playing games tonight. Listen, you're in a safe place. I'm going to respect, I can't come near you, but you don't need me to come and lay hands on you. The light's shining right now. I feel fire all over me. How many feel the glory of God right now? 
So why are you just sitting there? Lift your hands right now and pray in the Holy Ghost. But listen, if you have had thoughts of suicide, if you felt that, that spirit, that, that suicidal thing come on you, if you would be bold tonight, if you would say the one thing that I desire, that will I seek. I want you to seek his face right now. And if you want to be set free, I want you to stand to your feet quickly. If you felt suicide in your life, you felt like you wanted to end your life, something in your life is telling you it's all over, I want you to stand right now. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Here it is. I break that right now in the name of Jesus. I declare the light of God's glory to fall on you right now. Loose and let her go. Loose and let her go. Now, from this night, from this night, you have no hold in her life. I command the light to shine. Darkness has to flee right now. There it is. Let that go through you. There it is. There it is. Now, now, now. Begin to play. Worship team, come right now. Lift up your voice all over this place. Lift up your voice all over this place. The Lord is my light. Right now, if you're watching all over the world, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, those of you in this room right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's time to step out of the dark and step into the light of Jesus Christ. It's time to step into that which He paid for, that you might be called the righteousness of God. Right now, all over this room, if there's sin in your life, bondage, addiction, whatever it is, some of you, your heart's pounding right now. That's the glory of God in this place. Whoever you are right now, if you say tonight, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior, I want you to stand to your feet quickly all over this building right now. If you want to give your life to Christ, whoever you are, wherever you are, stand to your feet right now quickly. If you don't know where you spend eternity, stand to your feet right now. Quickly, right now, stand to your feet. You got a few seconds. Those of you that are watching online, Jesus died on a cross. 2,000 years ago, he shed his blood. He became the sacrifice for you and me. He took your place. He bore your punishment. The Bible says that this, the wages of sin is death. Jesus bore our sin. He conquered hell, death, and the grave. And tonight, He is the Lamb of God. He is the light of the world. And if you will open up your heart, that light will begin to shine. His light will begin to transform you. His Word, it, the, the entrance of His Word bringeth light. Wherever you are right now, say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I repent tonight. I'm sorry, Lord. I give you all that I am. Let your light shine in me. Let your glory rest on me. Let your blood wash me. Tonight I declare, I am a child of God. I am washed in your blood. Holy Spirit, fill me. Let your fire fall on me. In Jesus' mighty name. Now give God a mighty shout of praise. Stand to your feet right now. Lift up your hands. The fire of God is about to fall in this place. Come on, lift your hands right now. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your hands. Let glory fall on them, Lord. Lord, let 
let Shekinah glory begin to shine in this place. We declare tonight, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Lift your hands, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall, let your glory fall. right now James 1 17 says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning the father of lights So in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, pour down gifts from heaven right now. Lord, let mantles of evangelism be released right now. Lord, let the same fire that fell on me Right now!
now. There's fire on you right now. Fire! Fire! Lord, let your fire fall right now. Father of lights, shine through his life in a mighty way. Fire! Right now, right now. There it is. There it is. Let that go through you. Take your eyes off me. Put your eyes on him. More. More. Fire! Fire, fire. There it is. Let that go through you. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. There it is. There it is. The lady in the striped pants. That's glory right now. That's glory on you. This young lady right here. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. Fire. woman here just step forward I can't I can't touch you but the Lord says that it's felt like you've had to lead your family by yourself like you were in this by yourself there were situations that you have been praying and saying God when will it change when will this when will I receive the breakthrough but I just saw the light shining over you I felt like God said and this I, I fear the Lord too much to I don't play with with these things but I'm telling you I don't know what it is I've asked the Lord I said Lord what is it but I know this you know what it is and God said tonight it's already done it's already changed it will happen you will see it and you will rejoice you will dance you will dance you will dance This woman with the, the leopard jacket yeah look at me I've never met you before right I saw that the enemy thought that you were destroyed even when you were young it's like the enemy had tried to damage you but God said I saw a woman praying for you I saw somebody crying out to God for you and God said, I never let you go. The light has always been shining in you. But you see, oh my Lord. See, God said, the enemy sought your life. But God said, my hand never let you go. For even this night, the power of the enemy is destroyed over your life.
you will know the mighty hand of God. You will see my glory in your life, says the Lord. It was your mother. It was your mother. It was your mother. Father, I release the glory of God right now. There it is. There it is. Now, let that go through you. There it is. Father, I pray over Jesus' image, over this house. Lord, you are our light. And my prayer, Lord, that in these coming days, Shekinah glory would not only permeate across Orlando, but Lord, it will spread through this ministry to cities all over America that you would raise up forerunners across this auditorium that will be carriers of this glory I feel the power of God so strong right now
this building until I obey what he's told me. But I'm telling you, there's a call going out. People are watching online. People in this room, God is calling you. He's calling you. God is releasing ministries right now around the world. I don't play around with this stuff. I don't need to. I have no interest. But I must obey the Spirit of God. See, God wants to trust you with glory, but He has to trust you with trouble. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Right now, we're in a cloud of witnesses. The great. They're looking on you. see the glory that is being released I remember being in meetings this glory that I feel right now and I'd be in altar calls and I would say to the Lord Lord People know that Bible more than me. They've been saved longer than me. But I promise you, Lord, I'll go and I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Just let your glory, let your glory rest on me, Lord. I remember one night I was in a service and a man of God called me out and he didn't even touch me the power of God just fell on me and as I hit the floor I saw this red line and I saw my I stepped over the red line and the Spirit of God said to me there's no going back for you son Here is the awesomeness of God. Whatever He releases in your life, one day He will ask an account of it. You will be judged for it. What did you do with what I gave you? That's why it's a holy thing. That's why it's an awesome thing. That's why for Michael and Jessica and all of you, is that we finish well. Tonight when you lift your hands around the world, God is releasing, the Father of lights is releasing gifts and anointings. But He has to be your light. He has to be your everything. That's why I love Jesus' image. Because all Michael ever preaches is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. What's your message? Jesus. How many feel a holy moment right now? This is it. I can't pray it for you. But in your heart, I want you to declare, Lord, you are my light. Lord, I say yes. Let your glory rest on me. I will go. I will do whatever you tell me to do. I yield. I yield your spirit right now if 
Father, around the world, I call forth those you've chosen. I call forth the evangelists and the prophets and the teachers. I call forth the whosoevers, those that will run with your glory, those that will run this race, those that will hear the clarion call, the sound of a mighty army advancing and arising. fear no evil of whom shall we be afraid for if God before you who can be against you There's a mighty anointing here right now. Jesus is here right now. He's shining. Let there be light. This is holy ground.
As we sing tonight, let the Holy Spirit seal that in you tonight. Let him seal everything that was just positive within us tonight. As you guys see, you want to... Go ahead, Dom. Dom. Keep going. Let's just let the Holy Spirit seal tonight. Let's look at Jesus. Father, we thank you. Seal tonight, Lord. Seal it upon our hearts. right outside. It's, it's the Jesus booth. You guys can go. We have students there. Um, Jenna and John will be out there to pray with you guys, um, to answer any questions that you guys have. And if you guys still want to come to Jesus School, there is still time. Um, for you of those, for those of you that are watching online, you guys can still apply. Um, there's tons of students right now in the building that have flown in this past weekend. They're getting ready to school, uh, start school this upcoming week. And so we're super excited. We would love for you to come sit at the feet of Jesus with us. Um, and, you know, t next week it's going to be, we're going from glory to glory. So it's going to be amazing, guys. So I don't miss next week. We're going to join right here. Get here early. Um, I believe seats are going to go fast. So we, we, we encourage you guys to come next week. We're going to gather right here in the building. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week.